Imagine a world locked in the grip of an ice age where survival demanded raw power, unrelenting grit, and a body forged by the harshest elements. Picture a windswept tundra, mammoths thundering across the horizon, and a group of stocky, muscular figures wielding stone-tipped spears. Among them are women, Neanderthal women, not delicate or frail, but fierce, unbreakable, and built to thrive in a brutal prehistoric world. Who were these women? How did they live, hunt, and endure in an era where weakness meant death? In this journey, we'll uncover the astonishing strength of Neanderthal females, weaving a tale of survival, adaptation, and raw power that challenges everything you thought you knew about our ancient cousins. Stay with us as we step back 100,000 years to reveal their story, a saga that will leave you questioning what it truly means to be strong. Let's set the scene. It's 100,000 years ago, deep in the Pleistocene epoch. Glaciers dominate the landscape, carving valleys and blanketing Europe in frost. The air is sharp, the ground crusted with snow, and the forests are sparse, dotted with pines and hardy shrubs. Herds of woolly mammoths, giant deer, and cave bears roam the plains, their breath steaming in the cold. This is the world of the Neanderthals, a species of hominin that thrived for over 300,000 years in what is now Europe and Western Asia. Unlike the savannas of early Homo sapiens in Africa, this was a land of extremes, freezing winters, brief summers, and a constant struggle for survival. In this unforgiving environment, Neanderthal women were not bystanders. They were active players in a high-stakes game of life and death. Their bodies were sculpted by evolution to endure cold, hunt megafauna, and wrestle with the challenges of a world without modern tools or safety nets. Forget the stereotypes of delicate femininity, these women were powerhouses, their physiques a testament to the demands of their time. What made Neanderthal women so formidable? Let's start with their bodies. Fossil evidence, though scarce for females, paints a vivid picture. Their skeletons reveal broad pelvises and low centers of gravity, ideal for grappling and stability. Their necks were thick, supporting heavy, elongated skulls with powerful, chinless jaws. These jaws, anchored by massive muscle attachments, could crush bone or tear through tough meat. Their brow ridges were pronounced, their noses wide and cavernous, perfect for warming cold air before it reached their lungs. These weren't just aesthetic traits, they were survival tools. Consider the Jinshan female, a Neanderthal specimen from China dating back tens of thousands of years. At 165 centimeters, 5'5", and 78.5 kilograms, 173 pounds, she was a titan compared to modern women who average around 54, 59 kilograms, 119, 130 pounds globally. Her bones suggest a body mass index far exceeding that of most modern athletes. Another specimen from Gradu Prince near the French Riviera weighed an estimated 74 kilograms, 163 pounds, and lived around 100,000 years ago. These women weren't just heavy, they were dense with muscle, their frames built to withstand immense physical stress. Their arms in particular were extraordinary. Studies of Neanderthal female skeletons show biceps 18.7% larger than those of modern women, and even 38.7% larger than modern men's. Their forearms could generate 138% more flexor tension than the average modern males, making them capable of feats like wrenching hides apart or thrusting spears into a mammoth's flank. Compared to female college athletes today, their arms were 11 to 16% stronger relative to body size and up to 50% stronger than non-athletic modern women. These weren't just strong women, they were stronger than most men alive today. This raw power challenges modern notions of strength. 
Today, we celebrate athletes who lift weights or run marathons. But Neanderthal women didn't train in gyms. They trained by surviving. Every day was a test of endurance, from hauling carcasses up mountains to scraping hides for hours. Their strength wasn't about aesthetics, it was about necessity. In a world without machines, their bodies were their tools, and evolution had honed them to perfection. This makes me wonder, have we, in our comfortable modern lives, lost touch with the primal power that once defined our species? Neanderthal women remind us that strength isn't just physical, it's a mindset, a refusal to yield to hardship. Why were Neanderthal women so strong? Part of the answer lies in their hormones. Modern women have testosterone levels of 15 to 70 nanograms per deciliter, far lower than men's 300 to 1,000. But Neanderthal women likely had elevated testosterone, driven by their diet and environment. They lived on a protein-heavy diet of red meat, think mammoth, deer, and bison, because edible plants were scarce in their cold climates. This diet, combined with genetic adaptations, likely boosted androgen levels, leading to larger muscles and heightened aggression. Testosterone isn't just a male hormone, it's a survival hormone. In animals, high testosterone correlates with territorial defense and dominance, and Neanderthals were no exception. Both men and women likely had an androgenic phenotype, meaning their bodies were primed for physical confrontations, whether with prey or rival groups. This hormonal profile wasn't a flaw, it was an asset in a world where hesitation could mean death. This hormonal edge fascinates me. Modern society often frames testosterone as a masculine trait, but Neanderthal women show it's universal to survival. Their high-protein diet wasn't a choice, it was a necessity in a land where berries and roots were seasonal luxuries. This makes me reflect on how our modern diets, rich in processed foods, might disconnect us from the primal energy that fueled our ancestors. Could a return to simpler, protein-focused diets reawaken some of that raw vitality? It's a provocative thought. Our bodies still carry the genetic legacy of these ancient women waiting to be tapped. Neanderthal women didn't just sit by the fire. They were out in the wild, hunting alongside men. Unlike modern hunter-gatherer societies, where labor is often divided by gender, Neanderthals had a more egalitarian approach. Both sexes tackled dangerous tasks, from spearing woolly mammoths to butchering carcasses. Their massive forearms, especially on the right side, suggest repetitive, forceful actions. Think stabbing, scraping, or hauling. A single mammoth kill could yield hundreds of kilograms of meat, and carrying it back to a cave required brute strength from everyone. Their tools were simple. Stone spears, flint knives, and their own muscle. Scraping hides for clothing and shelter was grueling work, requiring hours of repetitive force. Women's arms, though less muscular than men's, were still far stronger than those of Homo sapiens women, who were often more delicate due to different evolutionary pressures in warmer climates. This cooperative lifestyle is a revelation. In modern times, we often glorify individual achievement, but Neanderthal women show the power of collective effort. Men and women work together, not because of ideology, but because survival demanded it. This makes me think about how modern teams, whether in workplaces or communities, could learn from this. When everyone contributes their strength, no matter their role, the group thrives. Neanderthal women weren't just strong, they were indispensable to their tribe's success. Let's dive into the fossils that tell their story. The Taban Cave female, found in Israel's Mount Carmel, lived between 130,000 and 50,000 years ago. Her skull and skeleton reveal a robust frame with muscle attachments that scream power. She wasn't tall, around 5'2", but her bones suggest a body built for endurance. Imagine her trudging through snow a deer carcass slung over her shoulder, her breath visible in the frigid air. 
Then there's the Jinshan female, the largest known Neanderthal woman at 78.5 kilograms. Initially mistaken for a male due to her size, she was a walking testament to Neanderthal resilience. Picture her standing on a rocky outcrop, spear in hand, scanning the horizon for prey. Her wide trunk and short limbs were perfect for conserving heat, a classic adaptation to her cold world. To make this vivid, let's draw a parallel to a modern story. Consider Ayla, a fictional but relatable character inspired by John Owl's Clan of the Cave Bear. Ayla, raised by Neanderthals, learns to hunt and survive in a prehistoric world. While fictional, her story mirrors real-life women who show an extraordinary resilience, like the women of the Inuit communities in the Arctic. These women, like their Neanderthal counterparts, haul heavy loads, hunt seals, and process hides in freezing conditions. One Inuit elder, interviewed in a 2018 documentary, describes skinning a caribou with a traditional ulu knife, a task requiring the same forearm strength we see in Neanderthal fossils. Her hands, weathered and strong, echo the legacy of those ancient women, proving that their spirit lives on in modern survivors. Neanderthals weren't the odd ones out in human evolution. Modern humans were. Compared to other hominins, Neanderthals were closer to the ancestral norm, with robust bodies and fewer unique traits. Modern humans, with our slender frames and gracile features, are the outliers. Early Homo sapiens women, like the Omo one fossil from Ethiopia, 200,000 years ago, 74 kilograms, were also robust, but later populations became lighter as technology and warmer climates reduced physical demands. Neanderthal women, however, stayed strong. Their bodies reflect a life of constant physical challenge, from hunting to tool making. Over time, interbreeding with Homo sapiens introduced more gracile traits, but early Neanderthal females were pure power, their strength a direct response to their environment. This evolutionary perspective flips the script. We often view Neanderthals as primitive, but their strength and adaptability were anything but. They were masters of their world, and their women were at the heart of that mastery. This makes me question our modern obsession with convenience. Have we traded resilience for ease? Neanderthal women remind us that our potential for strength, physical and mental, remains, if we choose to embrace it. As we close this journey through the Ice Age, let's reflect on what Neanderthal women teach us. Their lives were a testament to raw power, cooperation, and survival against the odds. They didn't have gyms or protein shakes. They had a world that demanded everything they had, and they rose to the challenge. Their story isn't just about the past. It's a call to action for us today. The lesson here is simple but profound. Strength is universal. Whether you're facing a mammoth or a modern challenge, you carry the legacy of these prehistoric women in your bones. Embrace that resilience. Work with others. Push your limits and don't shy away from the hard tasks. Like the Neanderthal women who hunted, hauled, and survived, you have the power to thrive in your own unforgiving world. So stand tall, channel their grit, and let their strength inspire you to conquer whatever lies ahead.